Let's get started. This week we are painting something different. Uh, we are going outside and we're looking in the backyard of the house in LA where we spend uh, a few months of our summer with uh, Ryan's parents. The composition in this image was really what attracted me to paint. I believe that in this case, composition has a very important uh, role to play because it's uh, what creates unity in my image. Unity because we have many different elements outside. We have the sky, the air, we have the water in the pool, and we have the greenery, the trees. And I realized that it's very important when I paint to treat everything in the same way. And composition was really what show me that this is possible to treat every area of the painting like if it was just matter and nothing else without really thinking about oh this is a piece of glass so it should be, be painted differently compared to how i paint the water no that doesn't make any sense our world in, is made of one type of uh, energy and it surrounds us everywhere so my painting should reflect that and of course we don't want to just paint a blob without any shape or form everything together everything the same no that's not what I'm trying to say and in fact my guide to avoid that is light and shadow and that's why I decided to create a composition outside in a, in a place where there's so many different elements, but light and shadows is what creates unity. And in this case, this composition that was just natural there, I just had to open my eyes and find it, was creating this unity in front of my eyes. And all of a sudden I realized Wow, this geometry is, has always been there every day. And this is the first time I can actually see it. And I think this is what it means to be a painter, to look at the world in a different way, with different eyes. And these eyes, they change over time, the more I train them. So I added, I think, three layers on this painting to get it to a finished level that I liked. And, uh, and since I don't do a little study before I, I do these paintings, I don't really study the colors and, um, and the shapes before I actually paint it. I just paint it and I, I go for it and, and see what happens. And with oil, I have the luxury to do this because I can change things as I go. And if, if I don't like something, like for example, I place this uh, mm, lawn chair on the right and uh, a bowl, an orange bowl with some uh, pastels, colorful pastels inside that Sophie was using to draw. And then I decided that I didn't like that element. so. I actually painted on top and I removed it and so you can see those changes as I go. Uh, when, I, when I started to paint this picture, I, right away I thought about Alex Kanemsky. This is a contemporary artist, he makes these uh, figurative paintings that to me are stunning. I saw him in San Francisco, maybe in 2016, because he had a solo show at the Dolby Chadwick Gallery. And I really, I was, I didn't know him at the time and I, I was in love right away. First of all, it's really the use of perspective and the interior space that he, he painted that 
I really enjoy. Uh, second of all, definitely the thing that screams at you when you when you see one of his paintings that are quite large is the mark making he has he is amazing because he really is able to show the form while using patches of color very very strong decisions one on top of the other and it doesn't seem to blend at all his decisions but then I also have uh, seen a, a YouTube video of one of his paintings that he actually painted for 10 years, this painting. And you can see in 10 years how much this painting has changed. And this is incredible. These are those, these are those kinds of projects that really inspire me, but at the same time, they scared the crap out of me. How can you paint a painting for 10 years? Of course, he was painting many paintings, but man, I can't, I mean, the stamina, the Keep patience, going, and the, the, the perseverance that, that he has to do something like that, and to change this painting through time. And, uh, and, and you understand when you see something like that, that the point is not really to improve a painting while you add different layers but it's, it's a process and you can see the process of the painting changing in time. And that's, that, that to me is uh, it's, it's really inspiring and amazing. There is one of the paintings from Alex Kanevsky uh, where there is this figure jumping in a pool and it's outside. It looks almost like something that you would find, you know, in Iceland. And the, the image of the, the body jumping is just a ghost. It's almost white on white on this white Nordic sky. And uh, I mean, you can see the way he painted the water really reflects the sky. In my painting, it was a little easier because my sky it was blue and uh, and then so and the color of the the pool because the bottom has uh, has little tiles they're turquoise so there's this strong turquoise that really looks the screams california i think in in los angeles but then there is also the the hardness and uh, the matness of uh, of the ground that is made of concrete then i because I really wanted to keep my edges very sharp and defined, and I wanted to give priority to my composition and to the perspective, I wanted this painting to, to be and stay very abstract. I didn't want to get entangled in a thousand details. And I just wanted to follow my first sketch. And then I just redesigned my edges. I decided to add a bottle of beer on the bottom right side uh, to give some grounding to the image. I didn't want it to fly away, let's say. And, uh, and I think that was a, a, a nice touch of daily life. Uh, not that I drink a beer every day, no, no, no. But that day I did. And, uh, and that day was the day that I had this vision of the shadows. So about composition, you can check out the book Edgar Payne, Composition of Outdoor Painting. I think I did like those kind of compositions for a while, very simple and classical. And now I, I want to go towards more asymmetrical composition. And, and I want to be influenced by photography and the way uh, nowadays, our phones can take amazing cameras with actually two points of perspective. These cameras, they have two lenses and they work exactly like our eyes. So as you can see in my painting, that's not a standard type of linear perspective. The line of the, of the umbrella goes in a different, um, like following a different perspective compared to the line of the back, backyard walls. And that's because I actually have two eyes. So my, my perspective is not linear going towards one point, 
but there's two different points and this really expands space and makes things look more realistic and and you can see that in the paintings of Alex Kanevsky as well uh, he, I think he almost uses a fish eye lens and, and this is something I've always thought about when I was younger. The line of the horizon is not straight. I mean, look at, look at the sea when you're on the beach. It's actually round because our eyes, they're spherics. So of course the lines that we see are not straight. So yeah, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video and for next week I would love to put together the portrait work that we have been doing until now with the, the study of space and perspective that we have done this week and maybe try to finally put the figure in the space and see what happens because I think that's when things are really gonna get exciting, at least for me, I hope for you too. So have a good week, have a good Sunday, and I'll see you soon, bye bye.